Hello and welcome to News Click. Today for our science discussions, we are going to look at what's happening in India in terms of the rising numbers and what does it mean for what was originally proposed as perhaps reaching uh, some kind of herd immunity by February and the DST super model, the government of India super model, which had predicted post February, the pandemic is going to proceed. If we look at what's happening now, and we have on screen for you, what are the states that are numbers which are seeing uh, rising numbers? We have Maharashtra, we have Kerala, we have Punjab, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Delhi, out of which Kerala is actually, though numbers are still relative to others, maybe considered high, numbers are actually falling. But the other five states that we have on you on your screen will show that they're all rising again. And Maharashtra, of course, is rising at the moment, rising the fastest. Now, the interesting part about this is this is not what the DST super model had predicted. It had predicted that numbers are going to continuously fall and we have reached somewhere, something called herd immunity. We had at that time questioned this whole understanding of herd immunity. We had also questioned that models don't behave the way they are supposed to behave in this kind of exercise that DST had done or the super model group had done. In fact, it is much more complex as a phenomena to model, primarily because it does not behave as a large homogeneous group. The people are really connected in different ways. They're connected to each other and when you look at groups which are connected to each other, they interconnect via some people who are maybe crossing over from one group to another, connect two different groups. And therefore what we have is what is in the world of modeling called essentially a small world phenomena or what are called semi-random networks. They are not random. That means everybody is not connected to everybody else. Neither do they behave in a regular way. And that's the nature of the epidemic, that the epidemics do not follow this kind of clear uh, parameters where you can predict what is going to happen because they burn through groups of people. And as groups are connected, as the groups live close by, they sort of the spread from one group to another. And this is a relatively difficult phenomena to model, particularly geographically in a large country like India, and also different clusters of people, different densities of people, and different ways they are connected. Given that, we had expected that we will see a rise and fall of the pandemic, which are not going to be as predictable as the so-called modeling exercises say. Now, if you look at Maharashtra today, you will find, as we are seeing here, that roughly in about 20 days, the numbers are doubling. This is about 20 days back, and we have the numbers which have doubled by yesterday, say. These are yesterday's figures. This is what you see, that they have gone to something like 12,000. About 20, 21 back, days back, there were about 5,800, 5,500, 5, 6,000 or so. So this is about 20, 22 days we see doubling in Maharashtra. These are actually high figures in terms of rise. We haven't seen this kind of rise except in the early phase of the epidemic when we are trying to catch up with our testing how many people are really sick. Otherwise, we were see seeing in an earlier phase when Maharashtra was, the, you know, still numbers were going very high. We were seeing a rate of increase, which was doubling, which was roughly about 30 days to 35 days a little later. So this is a sharp rise. And if we look at Punjab, we look at Gujarat, we look at Madhya Pradesh, and we look at Delhi, they're almost all rising at about the same pace. Now, this does not mean we should panic because it may be early days yet, 
we might still see a flattening very soon. So again, predictability is not my intention, but to say that the epidemic is over and the pandemic is over in India because we saw some fall earlier is not going to be correct. It's This is now being called the second wave. Now we have had some early uh, rise and fall. Delhi had supposedly three waves. But if we look at all of that as something which were short rise, short falls, then this is indeed a second wave that we are seeing. And it would seem to show that we are still going to see the epidemic continue, the pandemic continue in India, unless we can bring it down through either what are called non-pharmaceutical measures, that, that means not uh, measures of vaccination or medicine, but essentially through social uh, containment, masks, social distancing, et cetera, or through vaccination. And this has been what we have held right through that we are not going to see the epidemic go away unless we are able to vaccinate in large numbers. And therefore, what we are seeing is what was expected by all of us who have been predicting the pandemic will continue and that we are nowhere near herd immunity. This is now being borne out by figures that we see in front of us. Now, if we go over to another part of the chart, and that's an interesting, again, exercise to see, these are the cities that are there, which are affected currently. And you will see out of the cities that you can see out of the cities, Pune, Nagpur, Mumbai, Thane are the four top cities as of now, which are affected, followed by Bangalore and Delhi, which are relatively a little way down, which again shows that it is not Maharashtra as a whole that is in the grip of the pandemic, but really these four cities which are seeing the, that there are a large number of people who are affected by COVID-19 here. Now, the papers, and again, it's the response of the papers looking at the numbers, have said there's no cause for worry as yet because the number of deaths are actually lower than the earlier phase of the pandemic. Now, here I would like to caution our viewers that this is actually a statistical anomaly right now, because normally deaths take about two to four weeks lag before they manifest themselves. Obviously, when you fall sick, you don't die before two to four weeks of the event, if you are likely to die, that is. And therefore, there is always a gap between the number of people who are affected, infected right now, and the statistics we are likely to see in terms of death. So we'll have to wait till we can draw any conclusion out of that. It would be good if the numbers of deaths, because we now know much more about the disease, are really lower, or hospitals are better equipped to deal with the kind of infections they are seeing. They already have an experience of handling acute cases earlier. So maybe our health rates will improve. That's a caution that we must still take that yes, it may improve, but it may not. We need to watch the numbers and we should not predict something we have not seen as yet. Very clear, therefore, we are seeing a rising second wave as many other countries are seeing. We are not the only ones. Europe, again, we seem to see rising numbers. The interesting part, and I have to say it interesting, not in a good sense of the term, is that a lot of the places which are seeing rise of numbers are the ones who saw the rising numbers earlier as well. That means it seems to be still hitting hard the populations who were earlier hit, which would also seem to be explained by the fact that the infections never really went away. It's certain groups that had been affected through which it had burnt out, but other groups were there who were slowly getting infected. And at some point or the other, it again starts burning through new population clusters, which are not affected earlier. We had discussed with Professor Satyajit Rath earlier that in Pune, for example, the slum clusters were the ones where the infections, the numbers had been high and seropositivity indicated that those clusters had been badly affected. Later on, it's the middle-class colonies which are getting affected. And this is true for Delhi as well. 
So what we are seeing is new groups who were not earlier showing large numbers of infections are likely to show number of infections in this round and because the number of people who, are, who do not have immunity is still very large. Of course, it leaves one other important question, which is a question mark, that is it because new variants are now also coming into India? We know there are new variants in UK, there are new variants in Brazil, there are new variants in South Africa, and a lot of them are also reaching the United States because US is well connected to all of these places. And of course, if it reaches UK or US, as you know, it also reaches India. So is this happening? We also have the United Arab Emirates from which certain numbers have also uh, come back to India. It also, because the United Arab Emirates seem to have opened itself during the Christmas holidays and New Year holidays, there were large numbers of people who went there. Their infections also exploded, as well as what they might have exported to other places. So it is possible that the variants now are also emerging. And it could be also an Indian variant, which we don't, do not know about, which has a higher rate of infection. May not therefore necessarily mean more serious infections, but a possibility of a higher rate of infections. This needs more genomic studies. The sequences of the virus which are affecting the people must therefore be examined and we have to monitor that closely. We have not seen in the press or by the government any reporting of the kind of variants we are seeing among the new people who are getting infected. That's something we need to monitor. But it is very clear that if we look at what's happening in India today, that we are seeing a second wave if I discount the earlier smaller uh, ebbs and uh, uh, flows, if that's as not really a wave, but what we are now seeing is clearly a second wave. And that second wave does seem at the moment to be gaining pace. We have to watch whether we can flatten it or not. Does it mean we should have a different policy for vaccination? I'm going to raise this question because it doesn't seem there is any discussion on this. But looking at the numbers going up in Maharashtra, in Punjab, in Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, and Delhi, should we actually have a change in our uh, vaccination policy? Particularly those urban clusters where we are seeing a number of new cases emerge as we talked about the cities in uh, Maharashtra, as well as cities like Bangalore or Delhi, where numbers may be going up, should we then plan for a more intense vaccination focus in these places and try to flatten the curve early? These are policy level questions we need to, ask, we need to pose, we need to ask. Kerala is in an interesting case because Kerala never really uh, the numbers never really went down sharply. They managed to flatten the curve. The rise was always slower than other places. They flattened the curve. They could handle the numbers that they saw in the hospitals. And the current phase, what we see is a fall slowly in Kerala of numbers. So it may not be, though it is the second highest right now in India, but the numbers are roughly around, at the moment, around 2,300 or so. And this is something which is relatively much lower than what it was, say, a few weeks back, which is about 5,000 or so. So Kerala is at the moment to be watched, monitored. It numbers are going down. Of course, there is an election in Kerala that may lead to further rise of figures. We have to walk, keep watching. But there's no question that I think we have to keenly watch what happens in the four towns or the four cities in Maharashtra, what happens in Delhi, and what happens in Punjab, because Punjab also seems to show rise in figures. Gujarat was one of the earliest states to be affected, so was Madhya Pradesh. Both seem to show rises at the moment. So these are things that we'll have to watch, particularly focus where the infections are rising, and maybe we should really privilege those places in terms of vaccine. This is all the time we have today for NewsClick in our science show. Do keep watching NewsClick and also visit our website.